Hey gang, Dave Baker. Today, I want to take a look at the weapons wielded by the strongest warriors that ever lived. In honor of history's new show, The Strongest Man in History, I'm pretty sure these guys could handle these weapons, probably with one in either hand. This monster of a blade is the Scottish Claymore. Now, the Scottish Claymore may be the most iconic longsword in history. The name Claymore comes from the Gaelic Culloden Moor, which means great sword, and great sword it is. At about five feet in length, four feet of which is the blade, it was such a large weapon that the average soldier had to use two hands to wield it, making it a fierce and intimidating weapon on the battlefield. Now, the weapon was first introduced in the 1500s and used extensively by Scottish Highland warriors all the way through the 1700s. But the Highland warriors were such a fearsome and deadly group that even the Vikings were intimidated by them. This was a powerful weapon wielded by powerful warriors. This massive and intimidating sword is the Zweihand. Now, the design of this blade, with its parrying lugs and large guard, and the wave of the blade, was used extensively in pike battles. The guard could be used to push pikes up out of the way. And the waves of the blades could be used when smashing down on pikes. It wouldn't slide off. It would actually catch and break the pikes. Up to six feet long, weighing up to eight pounds, this was the weapon of choice for the elite guards of the Landsknecht mercenaries, German mercenaries who fought throughout Europe and were some of the finest foot soldiers of their time, notably enlisted by the future Holy Roman Emperor, Maximilian I. They helped him with his rise to power in the late 15th century. Now, the Landsknecht used these swords extensively in the Italian wars from the 1490s to the 1550s. Now, these weapons were not used by small guys. These were used by large warriors with the power to fight all day long with a weapon this size. I'll count. <laughs> now this iconic weapon is the Nagamaki. The word Nagamaki roughly translates to long wrap, which is one of the features of this weapon. It's long handle. The blades could be roughly three feet long with an equal length of handle wrapped in leather or silk cord, giving it a lot of leverage and action for the blade. Nice. Now, it's hard to pinpoint the exact origins of the Nagamaki. Some references mention it in 794 to 1185, where it would have been used by Japan's deadliest warriors, the samurai. You can see that it's a versatile, light, fast cutting weapon. Truly one of my favorites. Now this deadly piece of business is the knightly pole axe. Favorite of armored knights from the 15th century. Now with its three deadly features, an axe head, the chop, a thrusting point for taking a man off a horse or a man in front of you on the ground. And for armor, a hammerhead. You can see that the shaft is steel reinforced and actually has a guard. That way it can be used to parry weapons without damaging the shaft of the weapon. Now you can see these weapons in pictures and wood cuttings from the 15th century being used not only on the battlefield, but in judicial duels, trial by combat, if you will. Now, this was a weapon that respects no armor. It was used by knights who had both strength and skill. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, this intimidating piece of equipment is the glaive guison. Now, glaives were a popular weapon from the 13th and 14th centuries. Originating in France, they were usually a single-edged blade mounted on a pole, sometimes a knife blade or a sword blade. But the glaive guison added this sort of crescent hook onto the back. Now that allowed a warrior to either 
hook someone and pull them towards them, or to push someone away, or push a ladder off a castle wall, or lift pikes out of the way. And you can see the size of the blade was enlarged to make it a very large cutting surface. That was brutal, dude. <laughs> now, these blades also had a long socket and metal longer that ran down the shaft of the weapon. Now, that kept that shaft from being cut or broken by swords, axes, other weapons being swung at it. You can see, in the hands of a professional, that is an incredibly intimidating weapon. That was brutal. So there you go, some of the deadliest weapons on Forged in Fire used by the strongest warriors in history. And don't forget to check out history's newest show, The Strongest Man in History, Wednesday, 10, 9 central, here on History.